this is Kevin for Sunfur.com. In this video I'm going to be discussing how you might go about cleaning up an acapella that you've created. I'm actually going to be going back to an acapella that I created in a couple of videos that I used in the past which is the Bone Thugs and Harmony Crossroads which I used in the Audacity and in the Zine Wave Podium videos. What I want to do is to take things a little bit further and to remove some of the remaining instruments the noise cancellation technique I'm going to be focusing on is something you can actually try out in Audacity because the latest version of Audacity has got pretty decent um, noise cancellation features. Now a question frequently asked is where do I get my instrumentals from in order to create these acapellas? The answer is CD singles. Sometimes CD singles have an instrumental track which is very similar to the uh, vocal track. This is The Arms of Lorraine by Evoke a 1990s house track. I've got the instrumental and I've got the full vocal edit. Unfortunately with this situation something somewhere isn't quite right. The tracks are perfectly aligned but they don't cancel out properly. There are only a few areas where there are vocals in this particular track and as you can see throughout the result that we got in, in that lower track we've got instruments everywhere and in reality whilst the mix is a little bit lighter than the full edit, there's a lot of work to be done. Now if I go to the uh, effects menu and bring up the center channel extractor, I could use one of the acapella settings to try to improve the extraction and get better vocals, but sometimes it's very very difficult to get any kind of result at all. So it is something of a hit and miss affair and sometimes you win, sometimes you don't get very good results. But usually having the instrumental allows you to get a slightly better result than having no instrumental at all. Going back to Bone Thugs and Harmony, this is the sort of situation you'd normally get when things work out reasonably well. Some cancellation and some areas where there isn't any cancellation. Now I did do further work in order to try to get complete cancellation and in order to do that what I did was that I locked down the full edit and I did that by right click, right clicking and choosing a lock in time. Well, I moved the instrumental around and tried to get cancellation towards the beginning and towards the end. That was very successful and in this track here I got cancellation right at the beginning there and in the following track I managed to get decent cancellation towards the end. And just for good measure I've also locked in time the bounced tracks and that helps to maintain the integrity of the full uh, vocal. One thing I want to mention straight away is that I'm not able to do previews in this particular video and the reason for that is because even though I'm going to be working just with the acapella that I created, it is still copyrighted. One technique you can use to clean up an acapella in audition is to use the center channel extractor and if you apply that effect then it's possible to actually remove some of the instruments that, are, that happen to be panned either to the left or the right. And uh, that's done using one of the acapella settings. And in case you are wondering, if you make an acapella or a remix from copyrighted material, the copyright restrictions still apply. Uh, there is actually some sort of urban legend about a guy who used the song Happy Birthday to You in a film and then after he had shown the film several times, the copyright people got hold of him and said, look, you owe us £100,000 because Happy Birthday to You is a copyrighted song. And in actual fact, it's not an urban legend, it's a true story. Link in the description. To keep within YouTube guidelines, I'm not going to hit the play button, but I'll explain everything I'm doing so you'll be able to understand exactly what decisions I'm making. Now, at the start of this song, there are some very, very good vocals. And if I go to the um, extraction that I made for that starting part and listen to that there is actually a section there where we've got some very good vocals both in the center channel and also panned to one side now in order to extract those vocals what I need to do is not only to use the acapella settings but also to use the vocal remove settings now, that's a bit ironic but using both the acapella and vocal remove allows us to get two sets of vocals ones that are in the foreground and ones that are in the background that's frequently the case not just for this song but also especially for songs made in the last few years there's a lot of messing around with vocals in those songs now on to the main course I'm going to be using noise removal to remove some of the instruments that remain within the a cappella. sometimes some of these instruments are very useful if you um, want to use them in your final remix uh, but sometimes you want to remove them and get a slightly cleaner a cappella. I've marked out an area 
where we haven't got any a cappella at all, we haven't got any vocals, we've just got the instruments. And as you can see, in one of the channels, we've got a very high pitched drum signal and shift control and p on the keyboard or shift command and p on the keyboard brings up the noise removal dialog now because we're removing instruments which are in the foreground of things rather than noise which is usually in the background i've gone for the highest possible settings noise reduction at 100% uh, reduction amount by 100 decibels and in the advanced section i like to start off with the spectral decay rate at around 50 for the other settings, very low values are usually a good starting point. Precision factor can stay at 7. Changing the transition width sometimes produces decent results. 0 to 10, say. Smoothing, I normally keep at 1. And higher than that can cause problems sometimes. Now, the other thing is the FFT size. This is set at, I think, the highest setting, which is 16,000. Now, if I hit capture noise, we will capture noise at FFT size 16,000. However, sometimes what you want to do is to capture a very short patch of noise. And when you try to capture noise, it gives this warning which says select a larger area or choose a smaller FFT size. And in this particular case, I'm going to choose that small FFT size and generally 1024 seems to be the minimum that you should really go for 512 sometimes produces problems uh, but it's up to you now what I've done in choosing 1024 is probably chosen the best rate for this kind of uh, noise which is a very short sharp signal with a very abrupt beginning sometimes you do want to experiment with different FFT sizes because you can get quite dramatic differences in performance at different sizes now this particular signal is panned to one side it's very short and it also covers quite a lot of frequencies now because of that small FFT sizes generally tend to produce good results if it was uh, a long signal which covered a very short frequency band larger FFT sizes would probably produce a better result a really important feature of noise removal is this graph here which determines how strong the noise removal is at different frequencies now I usually take a bit of time in deciding what the graph should look like then hit select entire file and then preview to hear what it actually sounds like normally I don't want to uh, apply too great an effect in the area where the vocals are at their strongest now if everything sounds good I choose the output noise only button because I'm using very extreme settings I would expect that quite a lot of the vocals are going to be removed along with the noise signal so the hearing the noise output allows me to refine the graph making sure that I can actually remove as much of the vocals from the uh, noise output as possible selecting the uh, linear scale sometimes is useful in focusing on the higher frequencies the other thing to bear in mind is that the noise removal uh, applies different uh, footprints noise removal footprints to the different channels so you might just want to have a visual look at the different channels to see what the noise pattern actually looks like there. Uh, the next thing I want to do is to uh, fine-tune the advanced settings so that's the spectral decay, transition width, etc. Now if I can still hear vocals being removed along with the noise I would reduce the reduce by amount sometimes quite by quite a lot and the final setting that I normally look at is the noise reduction. Now once all that is done then I'll hit the apply button and in this particular case what happens is that I end up with just the noise signal. So it's important to undo that and then reapply with the output noise only button switched off. This gives us the final result which is a lot cleaner than the original and uh, if I zoom in there you can see that the drum signal there has been reduced by quite an amount. Now sometimes I would actually go back to the start again and redo it with different settings sometimes I would want to try to refine it a little bit it depends on different situations now this video has gone on for a bit longer than I expected so what I'm going to do is to cut there and come back and finish off uh, in another video